Hello again, and it's time for another project. Well, it's that time of year, so we're going to route out this Steve Good pattern. You search the website for Steve Good Snowman Scroll Saw pattern, and you'll find plenty on his site. And they're all free downloads, should you need them. Now, obviously, we're going to cut this one out on 3mm ply. This is recycled backer. This is the kind of stuff you'd find on the base of a drawer or back of a wardrobe so it's all recycled stuff i'm going to guess it's just slightly over three millimeters i did get one of my cnc bits and they come in at 3.175 and it's just more or less the same thickness as that so i'm going to say three millimeters for that so we're going to cut it out on that once it's all nicely cut out we will use this 5.5 hardwood plywood as a backer to stick it all on and then we'll Fill it all in with some nice resin mixed with acrylic paints. We'll talk about that near the time. So we've cut our back out for size. We can leave that for now. Because the idea eventually is once we've cut all the white sections out. So when this is all cut out. All we'll be left with is these thin black lines. Now it's quite a thin template. If you see the original lines quite thin. And I just got a sharpie pen. I did have one in here. I must have took it indoors. And if you went over it with a pen. To thicken those lines up, they would obviously be too thin to cut out for anybody. Don't care how good you are. So make your lines thick as you like, and it just makes it a bit easier when you're cutting out. We'll remove all these sections. It's going to be fragile. And eventually, we'll place some resin on the back. And once it's nicely done, we will stick it down onto our backer board. And I'll use a little washer. You'll see it towards the time to make a little frame all the way around. And we'll cut that out the same shape. Stick it all together, and as like I say, fill it all in with resin. So firstly, we can put that away to one side. We're not going to need that till later on in the project. We'll concentrate on our little wardrobe backer. That's plenty enough for what we want for this little project. Now you can carbon that on there. I prefer carbon paper and trace. And it won't take five minutes to stick that on there. Put your paper underneath and literally just draw around it. But for today, I'm going to do what most of them do. And that is line the plywood, the back a bit, this section here, with tape. And then we'll just spray on some glue. And literally just stick the old piece down. But the, the idea of the tape, and everybody has their own little methods, is once it's all cut out, you can just peel your tape off. And that comes off really easy. Not leaving any sanding or anything to do, apart from when we turn it over. And you can see where the felt tip's gone through. You actually got a reverse image so you can decide which way you want it. I'm obviously going to go for that way. So we'll stick this down first. And then we have to do what they call pilot holes. So every inner section we're going to drill an hole in. Wherever you want it. Some prefer to go towards the sides. I just like to keep it in the middle out of the way. Now we do have five floaters. Now floaters are literally pieces that are not connected. You notice these are all connected to each other. We've obviously got the three buttons here. And the two eyes. They will be floating away. So when we cut them out, we will remove the middle section and then we will remove the outer section. And we put these little rings to one side, the same as the eyes. And then when we come to put the resin in, we'll stick them all down in place and we can fill them in afterwards. So we're going to keep an eye on them three little rings here. But apart from that, there's going to be a simple case of pilot holes in every one of these. And then we'll start cutting it out. Before that, We'll stick it all down with our tape, our glue, and then we'll drill some holes in. Oh, and just before that, I've just remembered there's some blades to one side. Three types of blade basics. You get a pin blade, they've got a blade at either end. They just hook into your scroll saw, and you could use it on this project, no problem. There's nothing too detailed in there. This would fit into all these little sections. So you could use a pin blade. More delicate work, if this is really, really small and we have to get inside the eyes, you can use a pinless blade. They've got no blades on, little clamps holds it in. They're perfect for really delicate work. Personally, myself, I just prefer a spiral blade. Pegasus number five to date. You might just see from that. There we go. It's spiraled all the way around. This will cut in any direction. So when we start cutting it out, we could place it in there and if you just move the wood like so. Whereas on these other two blades, you're pinless and you're pinned. You would have to start there 
and then feed that into your saw and then turn the wood feed that and then turn the wood and feed that and you guessed it turn the wood and feed that so a lot of turning and twisting some fantastic people out there that can really do them i struggle with straight blades so spirals for me pegasus number five entirely up to you what you want to do we'll set this up on the scroll saw once we've stuck it down drilled it and then we'll definitely start cutting it out then Right, you can see from that, we've got our Pegasus spiral blade fed through those pilot holes. Remember, we've drilled them in every section. We've got a nice bit of ping ping sound. The scroll saws will have a little adjuster at the back, and you just keep adjusting that to get that sound. And your blades, they want to be smooth on the way down and rough on the way up. Doesn't matter if it's a spiral or pinned or pinless, still want to be smooth on the way down and rough on the way up. That way you know you've got your blade in the right way. Right, it's just going to be a simple case of cutting all these out now. Now remember, it's only three millimetres thick and it's just cheap plywood, hardwood. Basically a back row for wardrobe or a drawer. So it's not going to be the best. So we'll see how we go on and hopefully we can make it all the way through without losing any bits. Okay, let's start routing this one out. I do apologise. Let's start scroll sawing this one out. Right, we've cut all the way around that with our Pegasus number no. 5 spiral blade. We've had nothing broken off, so that's always a good sign. And we've also cut out the outer surround. And you can see from that, that's our little snowman all nicely cut out. Now, obviously, he's missing a few bits. If you remember about the buttons and the eyes, we obviously cut them out as a separate. So we will pop them on there towards the end. When it comes to the resin side of things. And obviously we won't forget a couple of eyeballs up there somewhere. Something like that. We get the general idea from that. Now obviously we're going to stick this to a backer. We've got our 5.5mm wood there. So we need to just uh, cut this around out. I'm actually going to cut it out the same shape of the snowman. You could leave it on a square piece of wood like that and put a frame around it and inlay it with resin just the same but i'm just going to make mine like an oversized uh christmas decoration I'm not too sure where the my balls should go to be honest we'll pop them there for now and see. we'll sort it out towards the end so to make this around basically identical to the cutout bit you see ideal just use a little washer i've used the ones off a sanding drum before and the bigger the washer a different effect or surround should i say you will get it will be that distance between there and there so i've tried a small one it's just not enough to be honest i did have a little sample piece down here so i wish just give me two seconds i did try a couple of sample pieces there like so that was too wide 
the smaller one was a little bit too small. So I'm going to go for this one here. The good thing about it, you can draw around it. And if it don't look right, just go in with a smaller washer. So we just place it where you want to be. We can take them out for now. They're of no importance for now. And I would get a little bit of tape and just stick that down just to hold it in place. And basically, all you're going to do is put your washer on and trace around it. So you can start anywhere. It doesn't really matter. So I have to put my hand on for now. And you're literally just going to draw around it like so. And you will find, you just follow it nicely, that line. You'll get basically an ideal shape for what you want. Coming over there and round like so. Once you've gone all the way around, if you feel it's a bit too wide for you, like so, you can just see that. Just about make out our line there, can't we? And I think that's going to be near enough for what we want. But if you want a smaller one, you'd also just pop on a smaller washer. Go around with that. Like so. And that would obviously give you a smaller border. Just about to see that from there, hopefully. But I'm quite happy with a big one. So I'll continue with this. All the way around with our little washer. Hopefully that's not moved at all. And then when we come back, I'll literally just cut it out quickly. And then we will be ready to pop on our little section that we've literally just cut out. Now. We might as well complete this now. Now we're here. So as long as you keep that pressed down, it won't be far off. Getting your nice shape. And that'll do. That's plenty of what we want. So it doesn't look much now, this moment in time. But once you've cut it out, we've peeled all our tape off, sand it down a bit, then we'll be ready for sticking that on there. I'll cut this out quickly, and then we come back, we'll be on to the next stage. Right, you can see from that, that cut out really nice. No need to show it all, it's just the same same procedure as basically cutting out the inner section. So that's all nicely done now. And ideally when we're all finished, that will fit central to that piece, as you can see from there. Not forgetting our little floaters, as we call them. So we've got three of those to pop in there somewhere. And I think there's an eye over there, and there'll be an eye down here somewhere nearer the time and that will be it this will be our project towards the end and obviously we will pop in resin into all those lovely sections to give it a nice bit of colouring so it's just a simple case of sanding it down now I'll just use a bit of sandpaper there is small files out there I do have some lying around here somewhere I don't personally not use them and then just to roll up a little bit of sandpaper small piece and that's just enough to get inside those back sections and just go just go gently like so ideally i would normally sand the back of this off while it was still connected to the main square piece and it just gives you a little bit more to sand away just those little nodgly bits we don't need to get too crazy remember as long as the front section is fine we're not going to see any of that bottom section once the resin goes in and then we have to peel this off same with these little three four five sections here and obviously the backer, just remove those little nodges like so. I'll give this a quick sanding over. We'll remove all that tape. And then we'll be on to the next stage, which will be to colour the backer with a little wood stain or some description. And then we'll stick that down with some resin. Leave it overnight and then basically fill it up. Quick tidy up first. Right, that's all nicely cleaned up now. 
we've rounded off those buttons slightly. I don't know if you could see from there. There we go. We've rounded them off slightly. And same with the eyes. And we've took all our little knobblies off the back, as you can see. And I've just used a bit of sandpaper. Like I say, there is files out there. I've known people to burn these little ends off. <laughs> Not something I would try or recommend, but you'll find your own way cleaning things up. And the same with the backer. We've round that all off nicely. And there we go. So we're going to we're going to stain it today. Wood stain. Originally, I'm going to put a bit of wood stain around the edge here. Remember, we're not going to see most of the middle section. And I originally was going to paint this black. Just spray it all black. Just so it fits in nicely. But it, we've got the old wood dye out. I've used this on my last couple of projects. And I promise you, it's nearly empty. So we might not see this stuff again. But it's fantastic for these small projects like this. That You've got a lot of painting. Normally I use a paint and a brush and get inside all the areas. areas. It's just going to be a little bit too slow. So it's literally just going to light teak for the actual snowman himself, the wooden sections there, the plywood sections, and the dark teak for the backer. Then once it's all nicely dry, it'll be a case of giving it a little spray of varnish. I'll explain that near the time, and then we can stick it down and start filling it with resin. So we're going to do the main snowman himself now. The good thing about this wood dye is it soaks in really nice. And a little bit goes a long way so we can literally just pop it on like so and it's going to soak into them sides really nice and it's just enough to say that we've got some on front and back it doesn't really matter you can really put this on if you had a little tray you can also dip it in a tray pop it out and it's all done but for me it takes a matter of minutes so i'll do this with the light teak for the snowman and i'll pop on the dark teak for the backer Right, that's both our pieces nicely done. Goes on really easy to this wood dye. Certainly a lot easier than paint and what have you. So it works for me. So a nice dark teak for the back, as you can see there. It looks fairly dark at this moment, but tomorrow once it's dried and soaked in, it won't be as dark as that. And a light teak for the rest of the snowmen. And not snowman, shall I say. I'm not forgetting these little buttons and the little eyes here. So... We'll leave that to dry and then we'll come back tomorrow and obviously that eventually will sit on there like so. Okay, we'll come back later when it's all nicely dry. Right, it's the next day or so. Everything's nicely dry as regards to this wood dye. Teak, light teak for that one. I remember dark teak for that one. So that's all nice and dry now. I actually did the full piece in the end. We could have just gone around with a little border. But for the bit that was left and the seconds it took, we thought we'd better cover the old piece. Now we're actually going to use a bit of resin now to stick the snowman to the backer board. Now ideally, you could cover all that with resin. You can even let it drip down the sides if you want to, what they call a total flood coat. And basically, just stick your snowman down like so. Put a bit of weight on there. And we'll leave that overnight and then we're just ready to fill it with resin again mixed with acrylic paints. Personally myself, I just want to leave the resin off these side bits. I think it just might be a little bit too shiny. So I'm going to spray this just with a varnish. Just anything that comes to hand. We're going to spray the full piece, just give it a little bit of shine. And we'll also spray this bit and not forgetting the three buttons and the eyes as well. That way it just gives it a little bit of shine to the wood. Just a little bit more finishing than having that bare wood showing there. Plus it's going to hopefully seal anything. I don't really have issues with plywood as regards to the resin bleeding and stuff. But any little voids or anything. And I've looked through this and it's been a great little piece. We've got no holes whatsoever. And the same on the backer. Sometimes you get the odd little hole and you just put a bit of wood uh, filler in there. But we've had nothing today so we got lucky. Just make sure your dust is all off. So spray varnish, 
basically just to give it a nice shine on both pieces plus it'll just seal anything we'll get inside all them grooves and that'll help with the bleeding and maybe help as regards to any little bubbles that decide to pop up from anywhere personally myself it's a bit over the top but you know for, for the two or three minutes it takes to spray that makes a nice better finish on it okay we'll spray all this and then we'll go indoors and find some resin and it's ready to start sticking this one down and filling it up right that's enough varnish for me this plywood certainly has soaked in i've had three or four layers on this but there is just enough to see it's not the best shine in the world and you could continue a little bit longer and put it on a bit more if you wanted to but it's certainly enough for my little project on the next one, I think we might just do it all resin and see how we're going from there. But well, for this one, we're literally just going to stick it down as it is. And for me, I'm just going to brush resin over the old piece. Like I said previously, you could brush it straight on there and cover all that completely. And hopefully just sit that on there and squash it down in place. Now the resin I'm going to use today... Remember, we've got these to stick on as well, so we put them to one side for now. And the two little eyes. It's going to be a Vista 1 resin. All your resins, epoxy resins, are all two parts. You'll have A, your resin, and B, your Ardner. This Vista 1 is ideal because it's a one-to-one -one mix, which basically means you mix by volume, and it's same of A to the same of B. And for me personally, I just use these little party cups, they're ideal because they have little grooves on the side. And I'll just mark off my B for my hardener. We went on to a little bit, we're only going to brush the back of the snow one. So I've got up three little nodges for that one. And obviously A for the resin, I've got up three little nodges for that. So we'll tip a bit of that in there. Tip about that in there. Give it a nice mix and literally just brush it onto the back of this snowman. Just make sure we get it the right size. I use these little party spoons, they're ideal. You'll see more when we come to fill it all in with acrylic paints and resin side of things. This basically is just to get this stuck on here. So I just scoop a little bit on and use the back of the spoon. And you can get it in the right light, you'll see it's nice and shiny. And then we'll do exactly the same with the little buttons. Stick it all down and I'll show you more about the resin side of things when we come to mix our acrylic paints. So quickly now, I'll just mix this off camera, put a little bit on there and we'll stick this all in place. Right, there's all our little bit of resin nicely mixed up. I do have little side projects going for anything that's left over, so we don't waste anything here. So it's going to be a simple case of filling the back in. Let's just make sure we've got our snowman on the right way for a start. So it's ideal, so we obviously want to cover the back of this. Now you can sacrifice a little paintbrush and brush it all on if you want to. I just personally just use... The back of the spoon you don't need too much on obviously more in the center pieces it doesn't matter we get it on there and if you get it in the right line you can just see that gloss put some nice gloves on have plenty of ventilation and just take your time and just cover it all like that any little cracks or little voids the resin will find it when we couldn't put the color in so we've got to be a bit careful and so on and so on so just take your time when you do this it's just the way i do it there would be other ways to do it, I'm sure. Personally, I think super glue would be too much to super glue all that down. So I'll just gently go away like that. And you can see that nice shine appearing. You've got plenty of time. Plenty of time to work with it. Like so. Okay, you get a general idea for that. I'll continue. And when I come back, hopefully, we'll have it all stuck down on the back of Right, you can see from that, we've got that a nice coating all over. I said previously, you could literally just put all the resin on there if you wanted to, but I just want to keep the side framework, the colour of the stain, and not ever such a high gloss on it with the resin. But I said we'll try that for another project. But this takes a matter of minutes. Especially when you're putting it on with a plastic spoon. 
that's it that's all nicely covered look you can see that lovely shine all the way there so you can see that you've coated everything so it's just a simple case of turning it over remember get some nice gloves on when you do this so I don't copy my example so just find a nice space something there and literally just pop it on like so it's more or less the same all the way around a little bit slightly you can move it over that's more, more or less central for us so yes that's near enough so we're just going to press that down like so and then we'll, once i put the buttons on and the other sections you see that resin getting squashed out there nicely once that's all nicely you've got the buttons on we'll simply just put a board over the top and put a nice weight on top to keep it down okay we get a general idea from that I'll continue basically just doing exactly the same with our little buttons here and with the poppies two little eyes in as well and now I'll put it to one side and then we'll come back tomorrow and it's nicely filling in with the resin time right that's all nicely in place now we've done our buttons they're all secure the door just wants a nice pressing down now hopefully and nothing shouldn't move too much. We've got his little eyes in there as you can see. It doesn't matter about any resin that's come out the side there. Look when it's you can actually slide it across that button. Remember that's all going to be covered over, so I wouldn't be overly concerned about that. So that's everything in place. Definitely need some weight on it. I can just feel a little bevel there in the middle. So get a little board, and simply just pop that on there. Everything looks in place. Put that on there nicely, get a bit of weight on it, something like so, something a little bit heavier. And then we'll come back in 24 hours and hopefully it's all nicely sealed and then we can start filling in with the coloured resin using acrylic paints. Come back in 24 hours. Right, it's a good 24 hours later, we've had a nice big weight on there and hopefully Nothing's moved and it's all still nicely stuck down. Excuse me. And you can see from that, <laughs> we haven't lost any of his eyes and they're still all nicely in place. Don't worry about this here. That's, not, that's all going to be covered over. And hopefully, it's all nicely sealed all the way around. The good thing about these little projects, we can start putting one colour in. I'll go for white first because it's the biggest area. And you can just stand back for a bit and just see if you do get any leakages. We shouldn't do, but if you do, quick wipe off. We put a bit of tape in there. And when it's all nicely set, we just peel the tape off and we're good to go. But we'll find out as we go along. Hopefully, we'll have no issues. Now the resin, as before, remember, A and B. Mix into little containers. Your resin, your adner, one to one, so same of each. I'd rather mix smaller portions amount should I say by the time you've doubled that up that would be enough there I'm going to pour a little bit into a separate container remember just little party things like this and then I'll do my white and hopefully we'll have enough left over to do another colour and so on better than mixing half a cup full and then you start panicking and it starts going off on you I'd rather mix small amounts at the same time so I'll mix that all off camera because we've seen all that before and we're simply just going to use cheap acrylic paints for our colouring and we'll decide what kind of colours as we go along okay I'll mix it up and when we come back we're ready to fill this one in okay we've got our second batch of resin all nicely mixed up I think they've more than enough there to do our white sections for now so it's just a simple case of acrylic paints you don't need too much in but you can always add a little bit more but don't go overly crazy we'll pop a bit in there for now That'll do, and we'll just give it a little mix round, and hopefully that colour will soon start changing. Like so. You'll see better in the daylight when we go back down to the shed. But you can see that white from there. And if you say, it's like I say, sorry, it's not white enough. I'll have to simply add a bit more. They do have certain ratios as regard to your resins, as what percentage of colour you can add, be it micro powder, 
inks, whatever, dies. I've not really had any issues as regards to putting acrylic in, but you won't put half a, you certainly won't put half of that into there. That would certainly mess up with your ratios. So I get the general idea from that. So we're going to fill it all in nicely. Get a little cocktail stick, just to open it along the way through these little tight areas. Put your gloves on. Remember, you want plenty of ventilation. Put a nice mask on. And then we'll start filling in the white sections. And hopefully, this should all be nicely sealed around all these. And then we'll move on to the next bit, and so on and so on. As you put each section in with your resin, just give it a little lighter, something like this. And you skim over the top. That will just help. Those little air bubbles come to the top and disperse. And hopefully you'll have a nice gloss finish at the end. Okay, I'll speed this up as I go along because it's the same thing, colour after colour after colour. But basically, these plastic spoons are fine because you get a little scoop on the end. And they're ideal for popping in like that. Obviously on the bigger sections, you can literally just pour it in straight from the container like so. It will find its level to a certain extent, but you've certainly got to help it along. So a little cocktail stick like that and just feed it round into those tighter areas. OK, we've got the general idea. We'll speed this up a little bit. And when we come back, hopefully it'll all be completed and we can put it to one side for a good 24 hours. Right, and that's it. That's all nicely filled in now. And as we've been putting the colours in, we've been skimming across with the lighter just to remove any bubbles. Now, personally for me, black seems to be the best colour to mix. Green, for some reason, I'm having trouble with that green. And I have to keep going back and basically just giving it mix and a mix and a mix. Don't know what it is, but just get rid of those bubbles. I'm going to have to keep rotating it around like so. But we'll get there eventually. Don't know if it's a pigment to the green or what it is, but that's not gone so good today. Not to worry, we can see from that everything's nicely done. And that's it. We'll put this to one side now and leave it for a good 24 to 48 hours. And when we come back, hopefully it's all nicely set and solid. Get yourself a nice tray or some description just to cover it over. Keep all the dust, flies, or whatever there is. You will find it, believe me. And that's it. We'll come back later. Like I say, 24 hours. And we'll see what we've got. Right, it's about 24 hours later. Personally, I would leave this for another couple of days, just to make sure it's nice and solid. But 24 hours is plenty for what we need. And you can see everything's nicely solid. Got a nice shine going down there, and we've certainly had no issues at all with that resin. If anything, the green I mentioned previously got a bit of a few marks in there, but I don't know if that adds to it or not. But it's certainly nothing to be overly concerned about. We didn't have any leakages at all, everything was nicely sealed with that resin, so we've still got a nice hardwood plywood effect at the surround and a nice glossy resin filled finish you can put that on a little stand you can make a little base for that if you wanted it standing like that i will literally just pop it up on the back a little hanger this will be a little wall piece this one so but for this video this little project is more or less finished so we cut it out on a scroll saw with a pegasus number five spiral blade we use three millimeter recycled wardrobe backer for the actual snowman himself and then we cut the rest out on 5.5 millimeter plywood and then we applied the 
dark teak to the backer. That's worked out really nice. I was quite happy with that one. And then where the light teak drew the actual snow on himself and certainly had no issues with that. A lot easier than painting, I must admit. Originally, we we're going to paint that all black. And I'm happy that we kept it with the wood effect. And then we sprayed it all with a nice varnish. Could have gone a bit more on that. I think on a future project, I might be tempted just to resin the full back piece, just to see how that finishes and let it run over the edges. But that's for another project. But as far as this one's gone, I'm quite happy with the end result. Just nice little fun project for this time of the year. So that's it. This little project is finished. And he measures in at 11 inches by 8 inches. Nice little project for this time of year. I'll just take this moment just to wish you all a Merry Christmas or a Happy Holidays, whatever you believe in. Be kind and be good to each other. And hopefully we'll see you in the new year. All the best to everybody. And thank you for watching and thank you for popping by.